17th, Wednesday, May 17th. So again, many of you have probably already heard that uh, on Monday, the Undersecretary of the Navy approved my request for public access to areas of public interest on board NAS Pensacola. Since, it's, since this complex issue impacts so many parts of our installation, as well as the tenant commands, thorough reviews at all levels of the Navy have been conducted uh, and were most certainly necessary for this effort. But I'll end up saying this uh, for everybody, the safety and security of the men and women of Pensacola, um, their families, the civilian employees, and now the visitors to NAS Pensacola are my highest priority. The decision to allow public visitation to NES Pensacola has been an ongoing effort, as you all know, for quite some time. It's been an ongoing effort requiring all levels of approval within the Navy to ensure that we have the proper safety security uh, protocols in place. Finally, there are a lot of individuals that I'd like to thank uh, that helped out with this effort. I know I'll only have some time to just name a few, but you're going to have to bear with me as I go through them. Um, these people continue to support uh, Naval Air Station Pensacola and our mission. So, specifically, Senators Scott and Rubio, Congressman Gates, Florida Senator Broxson, and State Representatives Andrade and Salzman. Additionally, the Escambia County Commissioners, specifically Commissioner Bender, Commissioner Kohler, and Commissioner Bergash, Pensacola Mayor Reeves and Sheriff Chip Simmons, as well as former NAS Pensacola skipper Captain Tim Kinsler. The continued support that they've provided. Uh, to the installation speaks volumes of the strong relationship that we have here at NAS Pensacola. Um, I'd also like to thank Admiral Kozad uh, Stirls. Um, so Admiral Kozad from the Naval Aviation Museum Foundation, Captain Sterling Gillum from the National Naval Aviation Museum, uh, Mr. John Hill from the Pensacola Lighthouse, and our National Park Service personnel as well as their employees, volunteers, and patrons for their patients as we work together the last few years to get this done. Finally, I have to uh, send out a sincere thank you to my staff, uh, as well as the men and women of Naval Air Station Pensacola for their dedicated efforts through this process. It's, it's been a while, it's been a long time. Every sailor and officer on board here has had a role in this, and I'll say this and mean it, Team NAS Pensacola is excited to welcome everybody back. Uh, with that, um, if anybody, if nobody has any uh, anything specific to say, we can open it up for questions. Great. Just going back to safety precautions, the timeline from the time of the base is closed. I know you weren't commanding officer then, but looking at the safety measures, can you can you talk about behind the scenes what what all went through to have to get to this point? Okay. So what went through? Yes, I can speak to that. A lot of staff work. Right? So there's a lot of coordination at all different levels. Specifically here at NES Pensacola, coordinating with the museum and the lighthouse, our tenant commands. Um, there was a lot of local uh, coordination to include our uh, representatives and community leaders out in the Pensacola community. So there was a lot of work done locally, but as we ended up kind of having a game plan in place, we had to bring that up through my chain of command within the Navy to get approval at all those different levels. And as you know, the Undersecretary of the Navy had final approval authority for the request that I sent up back in June of last year. And the reason why that takes so long is it's a process. Um, the, the previous exception of policy uh, was allowed to expire, so we had to go through that whole process again to ensure our security protocols are what are required and needed to make sure the safety and security of the installation is uh, in place. Hopefully I answered that question. Good. Uh, Admiral, uh, can you talk about what having access back to the museum to the general public means for the, uh, the foundation and, and the survival of, of the museum? A absolutely. So, so first and foremost, you know, it, it's, it's not as much about money as it is about relationships. When you think about the community of Pensacola, the surrounding counties, you know, this, this museum, this base is an identity for them. Uh, so, you know, this gives us an opportunity to recreate, rekindle that relationship. And, you know, if you think back to last year, you know, we had a petition that was signed, you know, in the three county area that with 20,000 signatures that said, hey, we want to come back on. We want to be part of this uh, once again. And, you know, my message to those people is, hey, folks, uh, you were heard loud and clear. Your message resonated. Uh, and on the 17th of May, uh, we're going to be back in business. Um, financially, you know, 
visitors are our lifeblood. You know, it uh, you know cost us about five million dollars over the last few years since the base was closed for you know uh, regular access. Uh, and so we're looking forward uh, as you walk around today. I would encourage you know you all to take a look at the new exhibits because we've spent a significant amount of time and effort. We just haven't sat back in the corner and you know felt sorry for ourselves. We wanted to make this museum bigger and better for when folks have that opportunity to come. And you know, as uh, Kevin Shishati said, that day is going to come on the 17th of May. talked about the visitors that have come through the base and the, the, the mass number that was still able to come through. What does this mean being able to just open it up? Completely? We're really, really excited. And the number we referenced, even though we were technically close to the general public, we still put 240,000 people through the museum last year. That's the good news. The bad news is in 2019, we put three quarters of a million people through. So we're very, very excited about getting back to being a forceful part of this great community. When you consider the Navy Flight Demonstration Squad and the relationship with the United States Navy and the Air Force here, it really adds a wonderful dimension to the Pensacola community and Northwest Florida in providing a unique attraction that, yes, we're a beach town, yes, we're a tourism town, but this museum and the Blue Angels just offer us such a wonderful opportunity. And we'll now be able to get back to something that we're very proud of being the largest single tourist attraction west of Orlando and east of New Orleans on the Gulf Coast. So we're excited about it. Hey, Captain Shoshari, I don't know if you can speak to this, but it, was there a, a certain thing that convinced the, the higher-ups in the Navy to grant the uh, waiver? Or was there a, a point that pushed it over the edge? I don't think there was a certain thing, um, but I will say that the the process that we went through was very detailed. So we, we were able to prove that we can have visitors uh, on the installation while maintaining the safety and security of, again, the, the installation as well as the people that work and live on this base, uh, as well as the visitors that will end up coming here. So there wasn't any one thing that uh, got us over the hump. It's just constant uh, contact and communication and coordination with all of our partners, both locally and uh, all the way up through uh, the Navy, uh, to communicate that what the plan that uh, we put in place here is going to be effective to do so. Could, could I add to that? Captain Shishati's staff worked tirelessly to articulate that case. So it wasn't one thing, but it was the articulation of we can do this. And he mentioned a thanks to his team, but they really did, under his leadership, a phenomenal job of pulling this together and convincing higher leadership that we can, in fact, do this safely and securely. What does it mean to see the lighthouse uh, maybe get back up and running with some steady traffic? I think I'm going to share the sentiments with these gentlemen that uh, NAS personnel put a lot of work into this. And to be able to be ready, uh, we've worked to sharpen our saws while we've been shut down to get it ready for you all when you come back. Um, and it's an asset uh, and part of the cultural heritage of Pensacola to be here. And it was really missing one of the gems of its crown in Pensacola for people to come here and visit, not have this wonderful um, museum and the lighthouse to be able to visit while they're here. Um, for us, and I know like the museum, we don't operate off federal dollars. We operate off do donations, um, earned income. And so for us, we, it means addressing deferred maintenance and uh, you know, uh, preservation issues. And, 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 and so it, it means a lot, and we're really happy to welcome everyone back. Captain, one last question. Yes. Going back to safety and security, how, how can you ensure the community that, that the base has done, taken all the steps to have this museum open, have the base back open to public access, ensuring safety and security is a top priority? <laughs> well, I'll say that over the last year, I've had to prove that case to uh, my leadership and the leadership of the Navy. Um, you know, again, we're excited to have everybody on board here. Uh, my team, I, I have. 100% confidence in my security team, as well as the first responders to include our fire department, everybody on this installation uh, to, to take an active role in the safety and security of, um, again, the installation and the people that come on board here. Um, uh, again, it, it, it's, it's an, security is an all-hands effort to include the visitors that come on this base. You know, we're going to live by the see something, say something motto. Uh, don't hesitate to call something out if it's, if, if, it, if it's an issue, and then we'll address it. Uh, but if, um, you know, if there's an issue on base, I have full confidence in my team that they'll be able to handle anything that comes our way. 
Thank you. Uh, Admiral, I know you mentioned uh, there were a lot of new things added here in the museum since the basement closed. Um, in getting ready for May 17th, have y'all done anything else to kind of get ready for the extra traffic, out of the extra staff, anything like that? Yeah, we sure have. As a matter of fact, so, um, you know, we, we kind of stripped down to bare bones over the past couple of years, you know, just based on the budget reality of where we were and, you know, how, where visitation took us. So, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, what we need to do by the 17th of May to make sure that every visitor who walks through that front door has a tremendous experience. In addition to three or four new exhibits that are here, you know, we've implemented uh, uh, some residential reservation system so you can kind of skip the lines on some of our attractions. Uh, we're going to put some VIP seating in place for Blue Angel practices because at the end of the day, um, I've got a, when, when he first visited, my grandson was six years old and he walked around this place in awe. Uh, and at the end of the day, he looked up at me and said, Papa, this was the best day ever. So, you know, our goal is to put things back in place so that every visitor who crosses the threshold and walks across our quarter deck walks out of here saying, this was my best day ever. Okay, I'll ask one more question. You and I have talked as far back as 2020. You, you're saying you're sitting up in your office, feel like you're the only person in this museum at times. Did you did you feel like you would get to this point, and how long did you actually think it would take? Um, I thought it would take two and a half years, and that's exactly where we are. Now, uh, you know, it, it's a good point because when I checked onto the foundation, this is all I knew. I, you know, I knew, you know, what eventually turned into a private museum for DOD only. But uh, um, if you watch the show Ted Lasso, uh, Ted Lasso has a plaque uh, above his door, had a plaque, depending on where you watch it, and it says believe. Uh, and I would look at that thing every day, and that was my motivation because, you know, that's why my wife Amy and I stayed here, was we wanted to be able to give back to the community. And, you know, whether it was kind of restoring the, uh, the uh, National Flight Academy or, you know, working with two great base commanding officers uh, and the decision makers in the Navy to restore this. You know, this was a purpose-driven decision and a purpose-driven mission. So uh, there's nobody happier than, you know, the four of us, but I can say that I'm probably the tallest at the table. So I, I, I think I get an extra credit happy point. Hey, on behalf of uh, Angler State Prince Cola, thank you guys all so 